Hi, my name is Adam Brewer, and I'm a senior technical specialist at Microsoft covering our security compliance and identity solutions. And I wanted to kick off a new video series where I'm going to go through our coolest security technologies in real world, real life demos. I have a demo environment set up. I've got most of these technologies deployed, and it's great to show them to you in action. I think it makes them real and helps you understand and think of ways you could use them to protect your organization. So what I wanted to start with today is one of my favorite features to demonstrate. It's Azure Active Directory Identity Protection. So Azure AD, you already know, is one of the largest cloud identity and access management platforms in the world. We handle literally billions of authentications every single month. And one of the ways we help protect our users and our customers is by assigning every single one of those sign-ins a risk level. So we say this sign-in, where a user is signed in from their home office for the you know, 50th day in a row, is a lower no-risk sign-in versus this sign-in, where we've never seen the user sign in from before, might be lower medium risk because it's unfamiliar. There's something new about the sign-in. Similarly, if we see a user attempt to obfuscate where they're signing in from, leveraging technologies like VPN or Tor browser or other anonymous technologies, we might also flag that as medium risk because it's out of the ordinary. It's unusual for users to do. And the great thing is you can use that risk level to assign policy to make real-time decisions based upon it. So if we detect a sign-in is high risk, you might block that entirely. If we detect it's medium risk, you might do something to remediate the risk, like deliver a limited session or force the user to do step-up authentication. So let's do a real-world example right now and dive into it. All right, so here is my Azure AD portal, and I'm gonna scroll down and jump into security, and I'm gonna jump into conditional access. Now, conditional access is a big story for another time that we could get into a lot deeper, but all you need to know today is it is a policy tool where I can write very detailed, very granular policy and apply it against my organization's users for their different sign-ins. So maybe a sign-in to an HR information system is going to require more strong authentication than would a sign-in to a less sensitive system. So here I have a policy I've already built for today's demonstration, and this is looking for medium or high risk sign-ins and assigning uh, or enforcing rather multi-factor authentication and also delivering a limited session. If you want to learn how to build your own sign-in risk policies, head over to aka.ms slash AAD risk CA, and that will walk you through the process of building that policy. So here we go. Let's step through this real quick. Uh, conditional access policies can target different combinations of users and groups based on different criteria about those users. So we could look for, are they guest or external users? Do they sit in a particular role like global administrator? Are they in a particular group? That's what we're doing here. We're looking for all the members of the group, sales and marketing. And this is a security group that could be synchronized all the way back from on-premises Active Directory. It could be a cloud-only group. It doesn't really matter. If it's a group we can consume, we can make access decisions based upon it. Next, which app are we targeting? Well, of course, in this case, to test it out, we're going to target Office 365 including components like SharePoint Online, OneDrive for Business, Microsoft Teams, and Exchange Online. However, and please, if you take away anything from today's discussion, know that you can also do third-party applications with Azure AD. What do you know? Salesforce.com, integrated with my Azure AD environment. That's because we support industry standards like OpenID Connect and SAML. And Salesforce speaks SAML, so I've set up a single sign-on connection and my users can connect to Salesforce without ever having to put in another username and password. They just use their credentials they've already plugged in. It's great for users, it's great for me, because now I can write conditional access policies against those apps as well. But today we're gonna to stick with Office 365 for now. Now I'm gonna jump over to different conditions and I can look for all sorts of different conditions like what operating system are you using? Are you using a browser? Are you using a native client? Are you signing in from a particular network location or a particular country? Is the device you're on managed and known to the organization? But in this case, we're just gonna look at sign-in risk. Now sign-in risk looks for a lot of different risk events and assigns a risk level to them. And if you wanna know more about what those risk events are and how they map to risk levels, go to aka.ms slash AAD sign-in risk.
and that will get you the documentation on that. So I'm going to look for sign-ins with higher medium risk. And if I detect those, I'm going to do something about it. And that's the next step. I have decided I'm going to grant access. You can see that over here, but I'm going to require multi-factor authentication. And then one additional thing I'm going to do, I'm going to use app enforced restrictions for this session. So app enforced restrictions is a capability of SharePoint online and exchange online to deliver a limited session. What's that mean? Well, we'll get to that more in just a moment. So that's my policy. Pretty simple. You could stand up a policy like this in just a couple of minutes. And again, with user targeting, I can target a small group of just folks in IT to try it out before I deploy it broadly. So know that you can test things in your production environment, but only target a very small amount of users to understand exactly how it's going to behave. And even when you're ready to roll it out more broadly, we have a report only mode here at the bottom left corner where I can turn it on, but just get logging on what would have happened without actually impacting the user's experience. So good to know as well. So let's pivot over to my first browser. Microsoft Edge browser running on Mac OS, uh, signing in just as I normally would. So let's do that with my demo user here and we'll plug in the password. And because this is a familiar sign in from a familiar location, I go right to Exchange Online, right to my Outlook Online, and I can look at my email. So I want to pull up this email from Christy Klein because there's a couple of attachments in it, like an Excel spreadsheet and a PowerPoint and a Word doc that I want to point out something to you. Note that I could preview it here in the browser, I could save it to my OneDrive, but I could also download it. So I'm gonna do that right now, and then you'll notice pop up in the lower left corner, the download, and I now have that PPTX file, that PowerPoint file. Those bits are now on my device. I could walk off with them and do whatever I want with them, unless of course you're doing Microsoft Information Protection, which is another story for another video. Anyhow, there might be scenarios where I don't wanna do that, like the next scenario. So let's zoom over to another browser. This is a Tor browser. Now Tor, as I mentioned, is a way to attempt to obfuscate where you're coming from. So look at my Tor circuit here. I'm going from my browser here in Des Moines, Iowa, across the Atlantic Ocean to the United Kingdom, over to Eastern Europe in Romania, back to the Netherlands, and then out to the Microsoft Cloud. So a lot of miles being covered here through this connection. So be patient if it takes a little while to load. The idea being it should prevent or at least make it more challenging to trace my traffic back to my original location. So I'm going to plug in my password here, but different behavior than last time. Look what happened. I got prompted to do multi-factor authentication. So I'm going to grab my iPhone here and I'm going to head to the authenticator app and I'm going to approve the sign in prompt. There we go. Set my phone back down and now I'm signed in, but that was cool, right? There is no difference in sign-ins. I'm, I'm sitting in the same location on the same device, but because one is coming through a Tor exit node instead of a familiar location, we immediately flag the sign-in as medium risk and force the user to do something to step up and authenticate. Now you can imagine if an attacker had compromised my user's password and were trying to sign in, but they were trying to cover their tracks, this would have stopped them dead in their tracks. Cool. Okay. Let's scroll down to that same email from Christy Klein and note there's something slightly different about it this time. We've got a message here that my organization doesn't allow me to download or print attachments from this device or browser. Hmm. That's because we've enforced a limited session. So limited session uh, essentially keeps everything in the browser. You can't take files with you. You can't print files and take them with you. So if I go to those same attachments we saw before, like the PowerPoint, note that this time download is not an option. And no matter where I would try to follow this file across to OneDrive or anywhere else, it would not ever be presented with the option to download it. So I can edit it in PowerPoint online. I can save it to my OneDrive. I can attach it to emails and send it to my colleagues. I can still be productive, but I can't take those bits with me. So if an attacker had gotten in and even had somehow solved an MFA challenge, they still couldn't walk off with all of my organizational data. So that's very, very helpful and a very good thing to know for those um, higher risk scenarios where you want a, an additional control on top of um, sign-in based controls like multi-factor authentication. So hopefully you learned something today. Hopefully you have a takeaway to go try in your own environment. If you liked what you saw, hit that like button, give me a comment uh, and follow me for more and I'll keep it coming. So thanks so much for watching and have a great rest of your day.